Okay, now we're going to cut the rabbit joint for the back panel into the side pieces and the top and bottom of the cabinet. So this shows one that's already been assembled and you can see how that's a little L-shaped slot that the back panel can fit into. We're going to use a router to create this. So I'm going to use a 1 quarter inch by 3 eighths inch rabbiting bit to create that back panel rabbit. So I'm going to pull the router table router out, unlock this locking mechanism if it needs to be unlocked, and unscrew the motor from the base. And now I'm going to install the router bit. When I install the router bit, I'm going to take the collet out here for a second, and I'm just going to clean all this excess sawdust out of the end of the router. Now when I install the router bit, I'm going to put the router bit in, but I'm not going to bottom the router bit out. I'm going to slide it in and then I'm going to pull it back out just a little ways before I tighten that. So that's all the way in and now I'm going to pull it back up just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch, and then tighten the collet. Make sure you get the collet as tight as you can so that the router bit does not come loose while you're working with it. And now I'm going to put the base back on and this is going to allow me to adjust my depth of cut. So now you can see the router bit is protruding above the surface of the table and I'm going to use my steel square to adjust this for a 3 8 inch depth of cut. So right now, the carbide cutter, which is this part right here, is lined up with 3 eighths of an inch. You don't want to measure to the ball bearing or to the top of the router bit. You want to measure to the top of the cutter, the carbide cutter, 3 eighths of an inch. Now it's very important that you lock the mechanism for the base. That's this lock right here. Lock that in place so that the table can't move in relationship to the motor. Now I can set the whole thing back in here and I'll put my fence on. This is the router table fence and I'm going to adjust the router table fence so that the carbide cutter at its maximum distance is one quarter of an inch away from the fence. So I'm going to slide this up just a little bit and then I'll take my steel square and I'm going to move the router bit back and forth a little bit to check and see if it's lined up with one quarter inch. And that's very close right there. I'll test cut that to make sure it's exact. Now I'll clamp my fence in place. And now I'm ready for a test cut. I'll plug the machine in. Take a scrap piece of wood. And because the router bit is coming from the bottom of the table, I'm going to start on the right hand side and work towards the left hand side because I always want to work against Okay, so now I'm going to take a scrap piece of wood and I'm going to test my router bit to make sure that the settings are correct. So here we go. And I'll take a tape measure and double check my measurements. I've got a one quarter inch depth of cut in this direction and this should be a three eighths of an inch depth of cut in this direction. And it is. So now I'm ready to cut the rabbit joint on my cabinet pieces. On my cabinet top and bottom I would like to have the rabbit joint start at one blind dado and stop at the other blind dado. I don't want to go all the way through. 
So it's a little bit tricky and I'll show you how to do that in a second. On the side pieces, because the side piece goes into the rabbit, the blind dado, the rabbit joint on the side piece can go all the way through. Okay, so let's do the top and bottom first. Because I'm going to be working upside down, I have to know where to start and where to stop for my, my rabbit joint. If you just look at your blind dado and make a pencil line roughly in the center of your blind dado, it doesn't have to be perfect, just close to the center, then transfer that line to the top of the piece. This gives me a reference of where to start and where to stop. And what I'm going to do is start that line lined up with the edge of the ball bearing of the rabbit bit. So let me just hold this over here. I'm going to line up this pencil line with this edge of the ball bearing. And I'm going to hold the piece against the fence, plunge the piece into the moving router bit, then work my way across until I get to the other side. And when this pencil line becomes even with this side of the ball bearing, that's where I'll stop. So let me show you how that's done. the rabbit joint stops about halfway into the blind dado on both sides. And that's what I'm looking for. I can chisel this out to make it perfectly square after I assemble the cabinet. Okay, now we're going to make the rabbit joint in the side pieces. The side pieces have no um, left or right at this time, so all I need to do is look at the pieces to identify the grain structure that I want to have on the inside of the cabinet. Now this is a piece of walnut and there's a little bit of sapwood on this side of this piece of walnut. So I'm going to make this edge the edge where I'm going to put the rabbit joint. So then I'm going to take this one and look at this one. There's a little bit of sapwood here. So I think what I'll do is make these two edges the back of the cabinet. So I'll just put a little B for back on these two. I can sand that B off later. Now I'm going to take these pieces and run these through the router so I can create the rabbit joint. I noticed when I ran that through there was a little bit of chipping that happened right here and I can feel a small bump right there. So I'm going to run this through the router one more time just to clean up the cut. fit this into the bottom piece that I routed so you can see how the two rabbit joints will line up with one another.